Hi, you're getting another one today. This is Tony Hinchcliffe. You may recognize him from the Tom Brady roast where he just destroyed everybody on stage, but he's most well known as the host of the podcast, Kill Tony. So let's give credit where credit is due before we get into this absolute fucking dumpster fire. Kill Tony is actually an incredibly funny podcast. It used to be here in LA, right, at the Comedy Store, which has completely unknown comedians come up and do a one minute set to the audience. It's broken the careers of a lot of incredibly funny comedians. And there are some genuinely heartwarming stories that you can find on Kill Tony. But also, uh, there's a lot of problems with Tony himself. So in 2021, Hinchcliffe was at the Vulcan Gas Club in Austin when he was introduced by Peng Dang, an Asian American comedian. And he went on stage and said a lot of wild ass shit, calling Peng Dang a filthy little fucking thing I can't say on this program or I'll get demonetized. And then proceeding to do a bunch of Asian stereotypes followed by mocking a Chinese accent. He then lashed out at audience members who had laughed at Deng's jokes and called them race traitors. Now that went fucking viral. Hinchcliffe was dropped by his agency, didn't apologize to Deng, and stated before that it was just a joke. We'll get to all of that in a minute. But that leads me literally in a straight fucking line to today. We're at Madison Square Garden at Donald Trump's rally. He decided to bring out, guess who? It is absolutely wild times. It really, really is. And, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. We're getting there. Well, there's your October surprise, motherfuckers. This clip happened like an hour ago, and it is fucking everywhere. The Harris campaign like jumped on it immediately. The Kill Tony subreddit is blowing up for the wrong reasons. And then literally not like half an hour after, Bad Bunny, fucking Bad Bunny, who is the biggest artist in Puerto Rico. By the way, there are 500,000 Puerto Rican voters in Pennsylvania. Bad Bunny endorsed Kamala Harris. That is, that is such a serious, unforced error. To, to put this into perspective, obviously, the half-baked ceasefire talks and shit like that have been insulting to Arab Americans and Muslims in general. Trump bringing on those Muslim imams yesterday also wasn't met with a lot of praise. A lot of Muslims are really fucking mad. This, and I know it'll be controversial to say, is somehow worse. Because again, who was throwing fucking paper towels after a hurricane in Puerto Rico. Puerto Ricans are not Democrats or Republicans, but they get really, really pissed when motherfuckers shit talk Puerto Rico like that. And I don't know if a lot of people are gonna take it as a joke. I can tell you, Bad Bunny coming out and doing that means it's not going over well. Here's something that I will say, right? Just to add a little bit of nuance, just in case people are trying to think that I can't take the joke, right? Very clearly, in different settings, jokes and bars land different ways, right? I'm a battle rapper. If I go to a battle rap, I am expecting somebody to say racially charged, fucked up things about my country, where I'm from, my family, all of those kind of things. And it's accepted there because those insults there seem like a sign of respect, similar to when you are roasting at a comedy club. If you're roasting somebody at a comedy roast or a club, it's seen as respectful because it's like, hey, I see you. If you're at a fucking political rally in Madison Square Garden in front of thousands of people caping for a candidate who has called Mexicans rapists and is widely seen as a fascist with ties to white supremacists and Nazis, my guy, that's a fuck up. And honestly, I know it's very easy for people to go like, oh, well, Tony's probably just a Trump supporter. It'd be very easy to compartmentalize that. I think this dude thought his bit was going to land here like it landed at the Tom Brady roast. And the Tom Brady roast was very funny. But obviously, you're supporting a fucking asshole. And secondly, fucking no. <laughs> if they did this at a comedy club from a politics perspective, I don't think the Harris campaign could have hit them as hard. This was at Madison Square Garden. But I think the lesson that everybody should learn is there is a time and a place for everything. There's a reason Eminem isn't doing kill you at the Kamala Harris rally. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is just a fun little extra episode you get where nothing comes of it and you can look back and I'm like, oh, actually that was a fucking miss.
three hours later. Hi. So, it got worse. <laughs> In the hours since I recorded that, it has just ballooned and ballooned. This is the trending tab right now as of recording. And not only has Hinchcliffe and AOC and other people responded, but Hinchcliffe was not the only performer who just fucking shat the bed at this. You probably have already have heard some of the clips that may have been played, uh, but just in case you didn't, you had Dr. Phil go out there and try to redefine what bullying was, saying that Trump isn't the bully because he's not in a position of power, he's just debating. You should tell that the reporters and people who he had beat up and cleared from the square for his fucking photo op in the June of 2020. Also, didn't you fucking crash Britney Spears and her family to try to give her psychiatry and shit? And when she refused, you then leaked a bunch of shit to the press and tried to gain confidence as her doctor? You seem kind of like a bitch. A little bitch who needs attention. And then you have Tucker Carlson, more obscene stuff. You have Rudy Giuliani saying this about Palestinians. And the Palestinians are taught to kill us at two years old. They won't let a Palestinian in Jordan. They won't let a Palestinian in Egypt. And Harris wants to bring them to you. They may have good people. I'm sorry I don't take a risk with people that are taught to kill Americans at two. I'm on the side of Israel. Fucking crazy. Just in case I can't play it, I'm going to record this. Uh, the Palestinians are taught to kill us at two years old. They won't let a Palestinian in Jordan, in Egypt. And Harris wants to bring them to you. What? They may have good people. I'm sorry, I don't take a risk with people who are taught to kill Americans at two. Motherfucker. This is the day after Trump tried to pull a stunt with Muslim Americans in Dearborn, Michigan. That's gone. That already was getting a bunch of pushback from other really prominent Muslim communities. That, what are you going to do now, man? That, there's no way that doesn't motivate even a fraction of people who were considering voting third party or sitting out to plug their noses and actually vote against Trump. And meanwhile, you had AOC and Tim Walls react to the whole thing. Garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay, all right. Okay, we're getting there. No Who is that Jack Wad? Who is that guy? Actually, I think that's Tony Hinchcliffe, which is super disappointing. I, I mean, I don't. He's a comedian. Um, like super upsetting. Obviously, it's super upsetting to me. I, my family is from Puerto Rico. I'm Puerto Rican, and like the things that they do in Puerto Rico are a testing ground for the policies and the horrors that they wish to mm. and that they do unveil in working class communities across the United States. And I need people to understand that when they, when you have some a-hole calling Puerto Rico floating garbage, um, know that that's what they think about you. And Tony Hinchcliffe clearly catching wind of it, quote retweeting them and responding, these people have no sense of humor. While that a vice presidential candidate would take time out of his busy schedule to analyze a joke taken out of context to make it seem racist. I love Puerto Rico and vacation there. <laughs> Tony, 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 a little bit of self-awareness. I'm not racist. I, I go to Puerto Rico all the time with my rich ass, something that Puerto Rican residents themselves have complained about for years. Or did you just fucking magically forget the whole controversy with Logan Paul? But he says, I made fun of everyone. Watch the whole set. I'm a comedian, Tim. Might be time to change your tampon. That didn't go over well. Not only because, again, it's blown the fuck up. You know who seems to have a problem with that sentiment as well, by the way, Tony? Your subreddit. As of recording, if you go to the Kill Tony subreddit right now, you will find dozens and dozens of people who can see the forest for the trees and be like, listen, we know what a joke is. We understand how a roast joke works. But there's a difference between the fucking comedy store and a Madison Square Garden rally that evokes the fucking America First Nazi rally from the 1930s, you dumb fuck. And of course it's short-sighted. Anthony Jeselnik had this great uh, thing that he brought up where he talks about an Andy Warhol quote being, uh, art is getting away with it. If you do a special and everybody's pissed off, you didn't get away with it. They caught you. Your goal isn't to piss people off, it's to make people laugh. And here's the thing, Tony. 
you pissed the majority of people off. You did that at a political rally. And now not only do you have Bad Bunny endorsing Harris, you had two other Puerto Rican stars endorsing Harris. You had a bunch, a bunch of support come in. The only time I've seen something kind of similar to this happen is the Trump assassination attempt where a lot of people just flipped like, okay, I'm supporting Trump now after that. Or the Mitt Romney binders full of women and, you know, uh, like 12% of Americans are moochers or whatever the fuck quote he had. Also, Tony had the audacity to retweet this thing saying that he was just an innocent insult comic and comparing himself to Don Rickles. I can say this with 100% certainty. Nobody is going to confuse you for Don Rickles, Tony. All right. Nobody, no fucking person is like, oh, my gosh, look at him calling Puerto Rico an island of garbage like Don Rickles would in a Don Rickles joke, which, by the way, you should know your whole fucking podcast is about reading a room in a Don Rickles joke. There's a mordicum of respect, even in your set. At Tom Brady, there's a mordicum of respect in the disrespect. The goal of what Don Rickles said is, oh, we all have our insecurities and our differences, but we're all one family. The goal of your set was, hey, these fucking immigrants live on a garbage island. There's a significant difference. And again, at the comedy store, people who watch stand-up comedy know that you're roasting. You're not like deliberately saying that, but you're at a political rally where they don't think you're joking because they all actually fucking believe that. Because they said it after your set. So your joke is not a joke anymore. It's an endorsement. You are an adult. You've gotten in trouble for this before. You're not getting away with it. You fucked up the room, dude. Even your fans think so. By the way, just very quickly, nobody on the subreddit is like, Don Rickles, just letting you know. I kind of think that the Trump campaign thought they had this shit in the bag. They thought they had momentum and they got really, really comfortable. And they were like, we're going to do a big fucking rally as a show of strength to just push our momentum over the line. And I don't think they understood that the dog whistling wasn't part of their momentum. Their whole tact was Kamala is this extreme person with no succinct policies. And as she's gotten better at articulating what she wants, they somehow reverted all of the campaign strategy they had of trying to somewhat normalize him, which already was fucking crazy, to the most double, triple, quadruple down racist Nazi bullshit you can get. Even attendees there felt uncomfortable. You have Florida Congress people being like, I, I'm not a part of this. You have Elon Musk using Frankfurter font to make his fucking Make America Great Again hat look like the fucking Nazi font. And if you at all are arguing like, no, that's not deliberate. If it's not deliberate, it's stupid. This is the October surprise. Remember what I told you? Everybody trying to reach for something and trying to cover a bunch of different stories and make a story happen. That's not going to move the needle. It's just going to be something that comes out of nowhere. Like, what the fuck is this? To the point where I think Trump is probably going to have to apologize. We'll have to see. Maybe he's apologized by the time I post this. But I don't know how you undo all of the damage from the last, like, 24 hours. Because Hinchcliffe has gotten into these problems before. You had four or five other speakers who said other really fucked up things. You somehow insulted all Palestinians. All of them. And possibly galvanized a section Harris was having a little bit of trouble with already. And even the fan base of the guy you brought up isn't vibing with you. It's October, everybody. Surprise. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments. Go watch Freestyle the News that I posted today. Um, yeah, just wanted to record that and, and let you guys know. Fucking wild.